what is your work for which you received the Turing Award? Well, it's about to um, about uh, encryption and uh, and um, somehow uh, laying down the foundation for. Uh, and digital security uh, at large, and encryption in particular. And so a way to in which you know you can actually, after a lot of uh, trial and error, to have a, a rigorous mathematical foundation, so that you're able to prove that, uh, um, that a certain encryption mechanism is capable not only of hiding the message, but also, say, partial information about the messages uh, that you want to send. And, uh, and um, 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 so, th so that you can actually evaluate um, how good is a system and compare systems and um, making sure that you, know, you have the highest standards for, uh, for uh, digital security. Okay. Now, thinking back to when you were a student, were there any people who were especially influential on you? Uh, absolutely. First of all, <laughs> I believe that uh, we are our teachers, and that is true for academics <laughs> like me, scientists in particular, and everybody else, even just humans, right? So there are. Um, very often, you know, I don't believe that we choose a field, but so much so that perhaps we choose people whom we like and uh, we, uh, inspire us to, to enter in certain fields. And um, so, in, in particular, in my, in my case, you'd be surprised, but I had a, a phenomenal elementary school te teachers between year uh, third and fifth year of elementary school. And there was a phenomenal um, um, a teacher that allowed us to express our opinion without getting distracted and making progress during the class. So I thought it was so much you know, fun and learning <laughs> that somehow I never stopped. And then uh, later on, my passion for math uh, came you know, even uh, in, um, in middle schools. And I had um, a fabulous you know, uh, professor, and she really inspired me to get into um, mathematics. And, um, and then, you know, continuing, um, when I entered, uh, finally, in, I started in physics. And, uh, but, you know, because of physics uh, needs a lot of math, they thought that it was a good idea to have a semester of math courses, courses for a semester in mathematics, followed by a semester of physics, and then year two would be mixed and match of math. The teacher in mathematics in the first semester was so phenomenal, so outstanding. This uh, Luciano De Vito was his name, that having not seen any physics, I already decided I wanted to be a mathematician, period, okay? And uh, he had a phenomenal style. He taught by examples and problems and uh, challenge us to solve problems and as you tried to solve these problems it became more and more and more sophisticated you had somehow developed all the theory even the definitions or uh, the technique and uh, it was amazing and you were saying that he uh, uh, presented problems so problems and, and it was a very uh, unique style the first time i encountered it and so um, uh, mr professor de vito had uh, a notion of mathematics in which rather than saying uh, definition, theorems, proof, definition, theorem, proofs, he starts saying, how do you solve this problem? And very often solving this problem obliges us to define some objects. And, uh, and then uh, to try to develop the technique of some form of solution and to find uh, leveraging uh, solution to previous problems. So now you only, don't only have uh, a tool, but actually you have a technique, something that you use more and more often. It was phenomenal, and you felt that you were reinventing mathematics, okay? And he, he, it helped me tremendously, first of all, to fall in love with mathematics, and second of all, this ability to frame and define things stayed with me, because in my career, I always uh, uh, preferred fields which were not existing or uh, very poorly defined, so part of the problem was actually to find a conceptual framework to, uh, to study them. And so I think that I have a lot to thank him for. And uh, then later on also in, um, in, um, 
in um, still in my undergraduate I, uh, I found finally discrete mathematics with uh, professor uh, Bem, Corrado Bem in the University of Rome and so I started getting into a little bit computation even though in an abstract way and, um, and uh, mathematical logic also with uh, Jacopini and so from analysis then I turned to more discrete math and then I ended up in uh, uh, doing my doctorate in uh, computer science at this point. Uh, um, my advisor was Manuel Blum, a very um, uh, very inspiring uh, mentor and advisor, and I was doing a world winner, and uh, I was in a phenomenal also class. Sometimes, you know, uh, students uh, can learn as much from each other as from their teachers, and uh, I had some uh, spectacular colleagues, uh, Shafi Goldwasser, who was, uh, of course, uh, my co-winner of, of the award, and, uh, but also my Kluby, the inventor of Tornado Codes, uh, and uh, Vijay Vazirani, who is an um, uh, exceptional algorithmist. So he was really a fantastic time um, to be at Berkeley. There was not only Manuel Blum, but also Richard Karp and Yao, both Turing Award winner. He was the place to be. <laughs> so it was, uh, and it could have been actually, uh, from a student, it was actually empowering. So these were people who, rather than uh, squashing you by making you feel uh, uh, small, they managed to actually give you the tool to grow. And around what year would this have been? That is um, uh, 1980, 82. My, I started in 79, but uh, before I, had, I started attending uh, research level courses, <laughs> one year passed, so I started in 79, and so, um, and, uh, so 80, 82. This, this, uh, 80, 81, 82, these were the three years I was in Berkeley, and um, they were fabulous uh, uh, times, and, uh, and I really believe that uh, uh, the interaction was very intense, and so somehow, in some sense, that motivated me also to start developing a theory of interaction of uh, can you do more together than you can do alone, all this notion of interactive proof um, are things that actually have resonance, so you, uh, one can understand that uh, basically by seeing how much more productive I was <laughs> given the right uh, uh, peers uh, around. Um, Actually, that seems like a good time. I know your time is very limited at the moment because you have the panel to go to, um, but that seems like a good place to segue to the way that people interact here at the HLF. Uh, is this your? This isn't your first one, no, is it? No, no, it's uh, my second time, and I think uh, is a uh, is a great uh, venue. And so somehow, first of all, uh, so we had to realize how little we do interact because somehow the system is rigged towards a specialization and um, solving very determined, um, very well defined problem. And if you want to do that, then uh, you are better off to work either alone or the one, two colleagues really are uh, share with you your uh, goal about solving the problem that you, you care about. But I think that uh, for relevance is very important in any science and, uh, and to really be relevant uh, so um, you must uh, interact with the rest of the world. And um, the notion of uh, bringing together uh, laureates from uh, mathematics and uh, from uh, computer science together with uh, young people who are going to become you know, great minds and already are a great scientist already, um, is, is a fantastic idea. And because you have, uh, first of all, the, uh, the breath that um, is in favor of, um, of, of knowledge and also you have the generational aspect because no, I mean, science is a social process and uh, you need <laughs> to be social, you need to take care first of all about your uh, peers and then also the, the future generation and uh, that makes, makes it special to, in my opinion, to be an academic that you, know, you always have this uh, new mind that, uh, that challenge you all the time and, they, and you can see if a problem is good or bad, the best indicator is do the students like it. <laughs> okay, so you can put, uh, <laughs> and the students have a great nose for what the research matters. And so you can actually, rather than searching the problems by going, you know, uh, trying to um, uh, judge it yourself, sometimes, you know, if you just listen to your students, and then you'll know it's something that really matters or not. Now, let's say that you have a student 
who, uh, who feels blocked, who feels like they don't know what to do next, or they feel just discouraged about their field in general. What would you say to them? Well, first of all, um, um, yet to say, but first of all, it says, um, um, welcome to the club. And so I was the discover <laughs> discovery thing. So first of all, um, um, people think that um, discovery is a linear progression. It doesn't work that way. It's a tortuous path, and you get lost al along the way many times is in the nature of a business. And so first of all, just by sharing that, that, that helps a lot. But the other thing is that if possible, to prevent the stage. So I think what you want to do and what is great in a full immersion system and um, when uh, you actually live and breathe uh, research by being uh, continually immersed in it uh, is, is a great thing because uh, if you meet with your students and uh, every day to solve, try to solve a problem, if you are not discouraged, they are not discouraged, okay? Or, uh, or at least one of the two is not discouraged and uh, the effort keeps on going. So, if you somehow, um, if, if, if research is uh, so participatory, um, you know, you only need you know, one, uh, one enthusiastic uh, person in the group and nobody loses enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. It's contagious. It's contagious. <laughs> um, I know that your time is running short, uh, so is there anything else you'd like to say either about the forum or about the participants or um, about your interaction with people? So I think, you know, is, um, we need more of this type of interactions. I really think that uh, the problems are not segregated by disciplines. Only artificial problems are segregated by disciplines. The world problems are whatever they are, and uh, we need all the manpower we can in order to, uh, to, to come out victorious. And so, to have, an, in my opinion, an international community from a variety of disciplines getting together is uh, the only way to remind us that we are all in together. We are not segregated by nations um, uh, when you want to solve the problems, and we are not segregated by uh, disciplines either. So the really important problems are really somehow international <laughs> and we don't know what tools to use. And so it, it very, for, it's very important that once in a while we get together to exchange DNA, so to speak, uh, techniques, uh, thoughts, and, um, and even um, addresses, phone numbers, uh, people that you uh, know that you can talk to and want to have a second conversation. That is uh, really invaluable. So it, I think that is uh, has a great enzymatic effect that you, know, you can start uh, here in a forum like this and some processes whose results may actually come one, two years later. And, uh, and uh, so I'm very glad that uh, in the vision of uh, Dr. Shira really this is uh, <laughs> and, and the vision and not only the vision, but actually the stamina to create <laughs> a program like, you know, uh, the other big laureate forum, which is a marvelous idea and a marvelous recipe. So I, I wish all the best for uh, continuous success. That seems like a good place to stop. Thank you so much for Thank taking you, the time. Thanks a lot. Thank you.